coming in at number six and the first playoff spot in 2018 spring. I'm looking at H2K. And now when I initially saw this roster, I was like, oh God, that is gonna be bad. But you know, I've looked at it and just seeing the competition around it. And I really like the Santorin signing for H2K. This is, I'm glad he got a spot on an LCS team. I was hoping he'd maybe get an NA one, but at least he got on EU. And it's a little absurd that he's now an import in his original region. But I mean, that's a great veteran leader that they have, a guy with world's experience. Uh, he's won some LCS titles in NA. Uh, but a guy like Smitty J and also uh, Kadrill in that mid lane are coming over with their coach, veteran from Schalke. So that's another little bit of inherent synergy and chemistry that this, these guys are gonna have going forward. Uh, formerly Sproddle and now Promise Q also formerly played on Schalke. So that's a lot of inherent synergy that these guys are gonna have pretty much immediately going into this split, which is something that is gonna be really sought after at least early on in these weeks because like I said before, every roster dealing with some changes. Some rosters, four guys, three or four guys. Some are entirely new rosters. So there's going to be a lot, a long adjustment period for a lot of these teams. So having that already established relationship between coach and player uh, and a couple of players on that squad is definitely going to help them out. And Kadrill and a guy like Sheriff. Uh, initially, I was like, who, who the hell is Sheriff? What, what is going to go on in these guys? Does he just police the team? Is he going to be the dad of the team? But no, he's a 17-year-old guy. He's born in the year 2000. That's right. We finally got guys playing in the LCS who are born outside of the 90s, which is absolutely insane and makes everyone else feel extremely old, uh, myself included. But this guy is going to be a player to watch in the EULCS, uh, and he's probably right now my front runner for Rookie of the Split heading into uh, here, along with Upset. They're both going to have a lot of opportunities to carry on their squads, I think. The only main concern with this H2K squad is that in-game leadership because there is a lot of young talent, and most of that pressure is going to fall on Santorin, a guy who has uh, played on plenty of super teams, mainly TSM. He's also played in the Challenger League in NA where he's been more of a vocal leader on that. But on TSM, he didn't have to be that leader because he had such huge personalities on that team. So it's going to be a very big shift for him to be looked to as a leader on this squad. And we'll see how he can handle that, uh, that pressure. But that sixth playoff spot is definitely going to be hard fought between H2K and Vitality. And I think it could go either way for them. Let's move on to number five, or as you could say, the top five, the second playoff spot. I am looking at Splice. A lot of people calling this a super team in EU. Ah, it's not, not quite a super team, I don't think. But I mean, they've got pretty solid guys at every roster or at every spot. Odawamne was rumored to G2, but he actually wasn't really rumored to G2. It was very weird. I'm very curious to see how Kasing does. We haven't seen him in the LCS in a while. Obviously, when he was in there, he was one of the top EU supports. But it's been a while. Let's see if we can get back to that form. Niski, a guy coming over from NA who had some fantastic games like this one here against TSM with a Quadra to close out a win against them. He looks fantastic at times in NA. We'll see if he can continue to grow in EU. And obviously, Odawamne is a guy who, on this new roster, he might be playing more carry top laners like the Camille you're seeing in this game where, again, he gets a quadra kill himself. I think uh, he's already kind of spoken about how he might, he's more open to playing more top laners or more carry oriented top laners. Uh, usually he's playing for his team uh, more so than, you know, maybe just playing champions he excels at. But I think he might be a little bit more selfish on this Vitality squad. And that's by no means a negative. Uh, I think he's just going to kind of put on the carry pants because he has that opportunity to do so on this roster. I think Kabe, Kobe, whoa, butchered. I'm sorry, my friend. I think he's a pretty solid uh, AD carry, but I mean, he's not going to be the guy who's going to super hard carry any of these games. He's more of your secondary carry uh, on this squad. He's not going to make any big mistakes that are going to cost you the game. Uh, so we'll see how that bottom lane with him and Kasing goes. Uh, I think that could still be a pretty solid uh, bottom duo. And again, that is going to be the most competitive role in the 2018 spring split in EU is that bottom lane. It's pretty much even the 10th place or the worst bottom lane, I think is going to be a pretty solid squad. So 
I want some ISO streams on those 2v2s in that bottom lane. That's going to be very interesting. And a uh, guy I didn't even talk about is Xerxy, who struggled in 2017 summer, as did a lot of the guys on the Unicorns of Love. But if he gets back to his rookie of the split performance that he did in spring, then Splice maybe finishes a little higher than that fifth spot. But the top four in EU looks very good, very solid. And let's dive into that top four. Coming in at number four, it's Shulka FC, uh, Vizichachi top lane, Pride Stalker jungler, Nuke Duck, Nuke Duck in the mid lane, Upset and Vander in that bottom lane, who I think will be the best bottom lane in EU in 2018 at Upset and Vander. Upset is just, he dominates solo queue. He was fantastic in the challenger scene. That bottom lane is gonna be rock solid, I think, for Shulka. And a guy like Nuke Duck, he had a very good performance in 2017 summer uh, for a guy who was on a pretty subpar team. And you know, he's, he's basically been hyped up for four or five years now, ever since Lemon Dogs. And he doesn't ever really seem to fully deliver on that hype. But last year was actually one of his better splits as a professional since Lemon Dogs really. And if he can really keep up the play that he had in summer on a much better roster than he had on Vitality, then I think you're looking at a top three mid in EU uh, this year. Uh, Pride Stalker, a bit of question marks surrounding him. Obviously on Rocket again, he was playing on a much worse uh, roster. I think now his lanes are stronger across the board and really he might have winning lanes in the majority of the games with this roster. So I think he's gonna have just ample opportunity to get these lanes even more ahead and just Really, it's going to be an easier time for him. When your lanes are winning, it's a lot easier to play a jungle than when you're losing every lane. And every lane is calling out, you come gank my lane, come gank my lane. So, Pride Stalker is probably going to have a much better experience playing League of Legends in 2018. Uh, Visit Chachi, again, just another UOL guy who had a off split last year in 2017 summer. But, again, new roster, new new fuel, more inspired with all these new guys. I, I think Shulka, they might even finish higher than four. I could see these guys maybe even getting to the EU LCS finals or at least maybe getting into that third spot. This, this team has a lot of potential, no doubt. And it's, is Vander still up to LCS uh, standards, the caliber that we're expecting out of him? I think he will be, and he's gonna be a great mentor for upset in that bottom lane. Look out for Shulka in 2018. All right, let's move in. Top three, coming in at number three. In case you haven't guessed it, it's basically the three world's teams uh, from 2017 that are less, left on this list and coming in at number three. We got Misfits, the best performing Western team at Worlds in 2017. So why are they number three? Well, they made a couple of roster moves. Obviously, Senkux and Mickey X coming in to replace Ignar and PoE, which Maybe is a slight downgrade, but I don't think it's a huge drop off in either of those roles. Uh, Senkux is a guy who can fill that mid lane pretty solidly. And Han Sama, again, just another young AD carry who is going to be taking over this league soon. Uh, he was fantastic in their playoff run. He was solid, very solid in their world's run. And Max Lore completely turned around uh, his season starting in Misfits playoff run and against SKT. He performed phenomenally and really showcased that he can be a world-class jungler. I'm a little hesitant to fully get on board uh, the Misfits hype train going into 2018 just because for the majority, pretty much all of the summer regular season, they weren't that good. They were a mid-tier team. They were a game below 500, a series below 500. They weren't that impressive at all. So, And then it was basically two months, a month and a half, give or take, where they looked great. Uh, against Fnatic, UOL, at Worlds, they look great. They got 3-0'd by G2, but eh, we'll, we'll ignore that one for now. It's just, are they actually that solid? I don't know if we can fully believe how good this team is based off that month and a half, two month stretch that they really are a perennial threat to take home the EU LCS crown, split after split. But uh, again, the off season, yeah, it sucks you lose PoE and Ignar to two different regions, but I think they did a pretty solid job in shoring up those positions with a couple of Splice guys who are already familiar with playing each other. And sure, mid and support isn't the most important uh, 
duo synergistic thing to have, but it still helps that they know each other's play style, they still have some communication, and they can, they can definitely add to this Misfits lineup. And they still have Maxlor and Alfari, which were one of the strongest jungle top duos uh, ending last split. And I think top lane's going to be a kind of relatively weak pool, that in support going into EU uh, in 2018. So having a guy like Maxlor and Alfari where you can probably dominate the top half of the map will be pretty helpful for Misfits. But they're coming in, number three. Number two, obviously we've got the old kings and the new kings of Europe left. And coming in at number two, we have got G2 Esports with four new players. Uh, Zven and Mithy, gone. Expect, gone. Trick, gone. All that remains is perks, and he's staying there till 2020, by the way. Uh, obviously, Ocelot wants to build around the Kid Wonder in the mid lane. The biggest off-season signing, obviously, Yankos and Perks, Jerks, whatever you want to call them. They should be the best jungle mid lane duo in the LCS this split. Uh, people were a little disappointed that they signed Wonder instead of Odawamne when all those rumors were swirling. And yeah, Odawamne is probably better, but listen, Wonder put up some really solid performances for Splice. And uh, he can play, a, he's got a pretty deep champion pool. You see the rumble here with this absolutely absurd escape he had. He can play Gnar, he can play Kled, he can play these tanks, really whatever they need out of these guys. But the key to watch for G2 is obviously going to be Yankos coming over. And how is he going to work with Perks? The first Blood King, Perks, obviously was just being so aggressive uh, in the second half of the summer split. And if he's getting ahead in these lanes and just getting out to these huge leads, and then you've already got Yankos coming in to join him and really just accelerating those leads. These guys should dominate that combo, especially, I mean, some of the top tier mid laners are going away. Febavin, POE, they're gone. Froggen hasn't been there for a while. Expect is retired. So, I mean, this is, this is Perk's year to really dominate that mid lane. And I mean, it's the pressure's on him because all these guys came to play with him. This roster is built around him. Obviously, Sharnan and Wadid, they were on a struggling Rocket team last split, and they did not look that great. Uh, it's hard when your team's struggling like that, but they were the best part of that Rocket squad. And we know that Sharnan, uh, what he's done in the past when he's had a solid support that he's built an, a, a relationship with and established some synergy with, uh, with Kasing, they were a fantastic bottom lane. And they are one of only two teams, or two bottom lanes, Hyarnan and Wadid, who played together last split that are playing in this league. 80% of the teams have an entirely new bottom lane. So, I mean, that's got to count for something for this G2 squad. Again, they're not Zven and Mithy, of course, but I think G2 did a pretty, a pretty solid job uh, with this offseason and putting together another roster that will give them a decent chance at claiming their fifth consecutive LCS title and I mean again this is the year for Perks to really showcase that he is a superstar player and one of the best mid laners in the West let alone EU and there's a good chance he'll take home MVP this year but uh, there's going to be a lot of pressure on him because he basically people are saying oh well Wonder and Sharnan will be better because Perks will be taking away so much pressure from the jungler and all the other players on the team so I mean, that's a lot of pressure. He's going to have to really perform at the level that we saw during the second half of the split from Perks. And I think he's capable of that. This is, this is the year of Perks. Although, really, the last two years have been because he's won four straight splits. But uh, more Perks, more G2. I don't know if they'll win the split again, but I think they're, they're definitely competitive and will probably get to the finals again. So here we are, number one. If you haven't figured it out by now... Uh, that's kind of sad because there's only one left and it's one of the most storied organizations in esports. It is Fnatic who looked like they were going to dethrone G2 last split. They looked fantastic in the regular season, kind of fell apart in the playoffs, got back together in the regional gauntlet, got to Worlds, were terrible the first week, then were great the second week, got to quarterfinals. Four out of five of the team is the exact same from last split adding in Hillisang to replace Jez's uh, this is the year where we've got to see some development from Caps and Broxa at times Caps was fantastic and you can just you can see the ceiling that this guy has with the outplay potential and just so talented but there were games where that would get the best of him he would get a little too over aggressive and eh, he would he would cost his team so 
We're looking at him and Broxa to just really develop uh, more so. And I mean, playing, getting to quarterfinals at Worlds is gonna be pretty awesome for your development. So I think these guys are only going to get better. They've already got the synergy with four out of these five guys. And I gotta say, bringing in a guy like Hillisang is a fantastic move for Fnatic. I mean, at times last year, uh, the rare games that Fnatic would lose in the regular season and then during the playoffs when they looked a bit off was they were just, they got a little bit too passive in a lot of these games and they just kind of let the other team walk over them a bit. You saw that, that Longju game at Worlds that was like 20 minutes. Longju only had five kills and you lose the game. I mean, that is incredible levels of passivity. So I think bringing in a guy like Hillisang who he's not going to be passive. If you're sitting around for 20 minutes and there's not many kills, he's going to go flash in. That could obviously be an issue because he's just going to flash in over a turret and die instantly. But I think they work out the communication issues, the synergy with Hillisang uh, going forward. And I think it's only going to help this Fnatic squad. It's another veteran leader to help groom Caps and Broxa going forward. I mean, Soez, Reckless, and Hillisang. These are guys who have been around for years, played in a bunch of... EU LCS uh, finals, been to Worlds, not Hillisang, but obviously Reckless and so as. So it's only going to help develop these guys. And again, a guy like Hillisang is going to be another shot caller you can add to the team who's not afraid to flash engage, which is exactly what Fnatic needs. And maybe it's a little boring to put Fnatic in G2 in that top two spots, but I mean, Fnatic, for one, they just made so few changes. And this team was absolutely blitzing the league during the regular season. It's hard to put them below number one. I know they fell off during the playoffs. And that first week of Worlds was absolutely disgusting to watch. But, I mean, you look how they rebounded from that, getting into quarterfinals. And against RNG, yeah, they lost in four games. But they should have won a couple of those games and have been at least forced a fifth game, and pretty much all the games in that series were really close, so I don't think they should be disappointed with that performance at all, and I don't think EU as a region should be disappointed with that, so it's, it's hard to take Fnatic away from that top spot, uh, even though they didn't win. Again, it's hard to not say Fnatic, and G2, yeah, it's four new players, so maybe two is a little high for them, but Perks, man, Perks and Yankos, uh, Yankos, you know, maybe he's just got to sweep some of these teams in the playoffs and then he doesn't have to worry about that fifth game where uh, a little bit of the a little bit of the choke job comes out uh, historically with H2K and that Rocket squad that he was on before. But playing alongside Perks, I think, is going to do wonders for him. No pun intended with that top lane. Make sure to like, comment, and subscribe for more esports content.